Hello and welcome to MIP TV. And with me as always is the bookworm extraordinaire, Mr. Bob Cook, who is going to share with us one of his favourite books, or one he's read recently. And it is called Self-Examination in Psychoanalysis and Psychotherapy by a favourite author of yours, I think, Bob, William, yeah, right. William F. Cornell. What's this about then, Bob? Well, it's a very recent book, 2019. And Bill Cornell, who's, who's been in the business of psychotherapy for probably the last 40, 50 years, I think 47 years might be the right uh, number. So he's been around a long time. He's well known in transaction analysis. His first training was in transaction analysis and simultaneously Reich. Uh, oh, William. Willem Reich, yes. And in an early review, I talked about him. Um, and how he's highly influenced uh, uh, by William Reich's workings and the idea of somatization and that we all carry our traumas, if you like, in our body. Mm. So he had two trainings very early on, one in transaction analysis, uh, one in uh, Reich, and how he put them together is really interesting. And as he goes along in his life, he, he started to be really interested in the body work and he also was interested very much in psychoanalysis and two particular people uh one donald winnicott mm -hmm. who's a famous british psychoanalyst who's well known for his work in ch child um, parent uh, dyad and uh, christopher bolus who's a very well known british psychotherapist as well who i think originated from canada actually um, but wrote, read those uh, wonderful books, um, you know, about the um, shadow above the object and the forces of destiny, but a well-known psychoanalyst who talked about object relations being the key to psychotherapy. So he was influenced by a lot of people, TA being his major grounding though. So this book talks about transaction analysis, talks about his early history, talks about the differences between some of his thinking at different times in his life and transaction analysis and psychoanalysis and body psychotherapy. But most of all, uh, he takes us, that's the reader, through his mistakes in his career and specifically his clinical career. And he has vignettes of his work and his mistakes in his work and how we learn from them. Is there any particular vignettes that strike you, Bob? Anything you're talking about in making mistakes? Is there any particular, you know, examples that um, that you want to share or that are striking? Yeah, especially in the character transfers. So when he tries particularly to um, help help and fix a person, you know, a particular person I'm thinking about, he tries to fix them. And he goes, and he, in fact, he talks about how he would dream about how he could fix these people, uh, this person. And in, in that process, ended up rescuing and infantilizing them, really. So that they were not really growing up, if you like. Um, and he, he talks about how he had an urge to problem solve, to fix things. And of course, the real, where he needed to go, of course, was to, just to be with the client instead of attempting uh, at all costs to try and solve the problem. Um, and he talks about how he learns about the difference between being and doing. Um, so th they're interesting. But what I did find interesting, I don't know in your practice if this is true for you, but um, he talks about he was finding himself at work, sorry, at home, and, you know, his work pastimes, if you like, thinking and dreaming about this person. And when you start dreaming about people or thinking about them outside the office more than, say, three or four times during the week, that shows some counter-transference or some projective identification. Yes. And that, you're then caught up in a symbiosis where you're not really helping the client at all. You're caught up in some sort of merger. Yes, you're in sort of, you're in sometimes referred to as the, the transferential Maya there, I think, Bob. Because, um, because you, you sometimes don't know where you begin in the client's hands. It's not something that um, I have to say in my professional practice has ever happened to me. 
Um, but I do know a therapist where, and certainly I taught therapists for uh, 10 years, and I have to say that students, certainly in their early training, can sometimes get caught in that counter-transference about thinking about the clients. And sometimes it is that discussion about projecting part of themselves onto the client and, ha and having, you know, and it's, it's certainly a lot of early work, I think, in supervision. I know you supervise yourself, um, trying to pick that up because that, that can happen, that supervisees pro project part of their yeah. organisations onto the client. Yeah, and he talked about how um, transference, so he went past transaction analysis in a way. I mean, I know Byrne talked about transference, but really Byrne talked about in awareness and out of awareness. So later on in this book, he's really talking about his, uh, this is Cornell, he's talking about being influenced by Christopher Bolas, who talked about the therapist analyzing the transference as a way of decoding the unconscious processes which get enacted out yeah. in the psychotherapy room. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Freud, Freud, all those years ago, talked about the same thing. He talked about, he was a dream analyst, Freud. Yeah, yeah. Freud, uh, analyzing the dreams was the royal road uh, into the soul of the psychotherapist, I mean, the client. So by analysing the dreams, by uh, examining the unconscious, if you like, because the dreams are in the world of the unconscious process, yes. you can get the decoded process, which actually get enacted out in the present. So in this book, it talks a lot about decoding the transference, um, looking at the, the, how the therapist can get merged with the clients. Yes. Uh, for example, erotic transference. Yes, that's a classic example, isn't it? There's a really classic one, isn't it? When we fall in love or we get caught up in the eroticism, which has been projected often by the clients or maybe projected by the therapist. Yes. And that is, this is where supervision therapy becomes key. Or we might find ourselves in an ethical graveyard. Yes. <laughs> R.I.P. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it can yeah. happen, and, and certainly things things like erotic, erotic or eroticized transference um, are sometimes quite hard to detect. Without you know, it's something that I know in my practice, my supervision practice. You know, sometimes you know, supervisees speak about you know liking the clients, and on examination, they've realised that there's some kind of attraction there. And interestingly enough, it's one that's not just in in their fantasy. It's something that the client may be projected onto them and they have to be thoughtful of it. I'll give you a gem from this book. Now, I've been practicing for 34, 35 years. I've been training psychotherapists for 23 of those years, or perhaps even more, actually, Rory. I've been a supervisor for many, many years. Now, this is a gem from this book. And I hadn't actually thought about it this way. Now, and when I think about this, it's quite, it's quite remarkable. So what... what uh, you know what he talks about is how the client it's really important for the client to use the psychotherapist mm. client can use the psychotherapist in a transformational way to have a different relational experience yes now i've thought about this of course with script from ta being enacted out in the relational process but the way I've always thought about this, or most of my life, is the co-created relationship in that uh, process where the actual therapist, you know, through intention and transactions, enters the relationship. But actually to think about it like the client is using the therapist in the service of transformational experience brings another dynamic to this. And in fact, in some ways helps me ground myself in the sense that the therapist is using you, oh, sorry, the client is using you, which is really interesting in terms of adult grounding. Yeah. Well, they could be testing them, testing their new selves out, couldn't they? Mm -hmm. And testing, um, or, you know, previously untapped or unexplored emotions out. Mm. And, and I think it's a nice way to think about it because if you think of beginning counselors and beginning therapists, you, you know this as well as me, you've been around for a long time and teaching people this. 
they, 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 right at the beginning, they are so afraid to make mistakes. They want to get things right, or they want to, you know, they want to do a lot of teaching, educative therapy, if you like, doing the right thing and not the wrong thing, um, trying to help the client so much. Uh, they go over boundaries quite often. They go over the time boundaries, all in their investment to help the client. Mm. And often, that's where the problems start occurring because they lose their sense of self in attempting to help the client, of course, who's usually projecting something like, uh, please help me or fix me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. But if you think of it as the client needing to use you rather than the other way around, we have a different ball game, don't we? Absolutely. You know, and why shouldn't clients be able to test out all the aspects of themselves in the therapy room? You know, I mean, it's up to us to hold the boundary on that. <laughs> as therapy. Oh, okay. But, yeah, of course. Uh, but well, yeah. That's not fitting. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, it made me think, it made me think, especially if you think about the, the move to, towards relational therapy, co creative therapy. It made, me, it made me think anyway. So I, I took that from that book. If you're really interested in a really well known TA therapist's journey from learning transaction analysis through to body psychotherapy through to psychoanalysis and psychodynamic therapy, learning by his mistakes to, to, you know, to where he is today. That's a, this is a really good book. So the book we've been discussing is Self-Examination in Psychoanalysis and Psychotherapy by a perennial favourite, certainly on this channel, William, William H. Cornell. And we're going to put the... Um, we're going to put the link to the book in the, in the comments bar below. If you've read the book, why don't you put a comment in? Um, and share your experience of it because uh, we know we'd like to see comments so give us a like don't forget to press the subscribe button uh, and as always bob cook thank you very much thank you